Hello, my name is Paul Tranny. Uh, I want to take you through the Creative Cloud updates we have for web and animation as of February, specifically February 8th, 2016. So, but what I want to focus on is Animate CC. It was previously Flash Professional. We, we've made a platform agnostic tool, okay? We took Flash and we said, hey, you know what? We want to give animators the creative flexibility to publish to any platform that they want. So if they want to publish to Flash or HTML5 or uh, WebGL or SVG or even your own custom framework like Snap SVG is one. And even future proofing your content, who knows what's next? Well, that's what Animate CC is for. So here I am in Animate CC. I'm going to first off need some graphics. I'm just going to open up my CC library as I can see a number of my assets. Uh, but what I need to do is I need to grab. Uh, some assets. So I'm just working on this old motorcycle club. Uh, we can see that asset right here. Uh, that might be what I want. But I've actually already synced and actually licensed that logo, if you will. Okay, and notice how I drag it in. I then get the ability to customize it the way I want because I have a lot of flexibility in Animate CC. I can take a, and I could do a search for motorcycles, all that good stuff. I've already done that. I have a couple. Here's a you know, just a black and white motorcycle I can bring in like that. Let's drop in this car, sure. Got to represent the various vehicles. One thing I'm noticing is I don't like how these colors don't match. They're, they want to match, but they don't. And honestly, I, I want to see more of this. I want to show you this. This is so cool. Uh, diving into swatches, okay? Those letters, I can change the color. I can change it to, say, for instance, uh, you know, this bright red in the very center. Sure, why not? Okay, so it's that bright red, okay? And you do that here, for instance, as well. You know, the same thing. I can change it to that bright, bright red. But if I decide to change it to this muted red, well, the issue is I have to change it everywhere to make sure it matches. When actually what you can do is you can save this as, right over here, convert to a tagged swatch. So it's actually a uh, linked color. So anywhere where I use that, and if I decide, I'm like, ah, I'm not crazy about that, maybe it shouldn't be red, maybe it should be more of a gold, I can change it to this sort of muted gold, like that, and you can see it changes everywhere that I'd expect it. So I love tagged swatches, just really powerful what you can do uh, using them. And uh, so I just brought in assets. I actually want to also create, maybe I want some motion lines, for instance. I can draw those motion lines, but if I want to move this line, you actually don't get that line. You get the, uh, it's like a, the blob brush, for instance, in Illustrator. You only get the edges. That doesn't work for me. I want to introduce you to this paint brush. Drawing out, there's my arrow, and we have that flexibility to, you know, adjust that particular line, all right, and make it wavy or whatever the case may be, as I'd expect. Okay, and uh, not only that, these are great, these arrows. I can actually use some of my brushes that I've created in Adobe Capture CC, because I've actually captured shapes and brushes and colors in Capture CC, which are, is our mobile app, and uh, that's what I'd want to do at this point. Just come in here and say, hey, you know what? Let's use this motorcycle brush. I've just changed that, and now I can have my own like custom fun little motorcycle brush, whatever the case may be. Now when you're drawing out curves like that, it's sometimes difficult because you actually can't rotate a piece of paper um, like you'd want to. Well, you actually can in Animate. I'm using my touchpad and I'm just using my touchpad to rotate around uh, this document or this scene and it allows me to sort of create that curve that I want, just allows me that flexibility to draw even easier and I can reset it right there. Um, and that's what you can do. You have that flexibility, you can create that animation that you want to create. You end up with some, maybe something like this. But what if they come back to me and like, hey, they want to use this on the monitor in this, in this particular club, say for instance, it's going to play you know, as you first walk in. Well, that's actually at a different size. It's actually at 1920 by 1080. Scale that content as well. And all the animation comes with it as well. So all that animation is there. I can see it's that new size. Everything's scaled. So I actually want to make this 1280 by 400, okay? And I'm just going to chop off the top because I really just want these cars because at this point, I want a web banner. In fact, I don't need this content right here, the top. So maybe I just want this animation, okay? Because this is for my web banner.
I can change it to say HTML5 canvas or WebGL, and this is actually a canvas file. Okay, so I've published out this web banner, or excuse me, I've converted this to a web uh, HTML5 canvas, and uh, quite frankly, I can publish it out, but I want to go beyond that because I'm going to go into publish settings. I'm going to show you. Sure, I can publish as JavaScript HTML. I'm going to publish this as an OAM package. In fact, if we take a look on my desktop, so again, you could have the SWF, HTML, OAM, SVG, WebGL, and there's more I could talk about with Animate. Uh, I didn't get into, you know, exporting out 4K video and a number of other things around publishing and even some creation uh, capabilities. But nonetheless, I need to move on because I want to start using that asset and really introduce you to, uh, again, using that asset in the case of using it with Muse. Okay, the new thing with Muse is it really allows you for free flow responsive design. So there's now responsive design in Muse CC, which is fantastic. Um, I first want to actually bring in that asset that I've just made. OAM file, placing that right down here. There it is. In fact, I want this to be the footer. So I'm going to click that button and it's going to make it the footer. And then I just move it into position like that. So those cars are going to be moving across on the bottom. It's going to look really cool. Okay. Not only that, if I go into my home page, check this out. This is what I mean when I say responsive design, or at least this is the easiest way to like exemplify it. Okay, so larger screen, as I scale it down, you can see this content start to change, okay? And what's going on here is this graphic, for instance, if I take a look, it's going to have a responsive width and height, so you'll see it scale down. Same thing for this text right here, but you can see how that content looks good. It's all about like right here, and I think it gets a little thin, right? I think we can all agree the balance looks off. I can add a new breakpoint or media query. Taking this asset, bring it up here. I can just have fun. I can just start playing with this content. Check this out right over here. We could pin it to the center, okay, just like that, and I can check it. See it right here. Large, you can see those cool cars rolling by. Obviously, I need to adjust this some more, but uh, all in all, it's not bad. In fact, let's just like zoom out because if we are even on a larger screen, you can see this content. Responsive design in Muse CC, Creative Cloud Libraries, all that content synced up, using assets whenever I want to use them, just giving me that flexibility when going from animation to a responsive layout, giving me full creative control. Uh, but that's what's going on. And again, uh, this is all actually available in Creative Cloud as of Monday, February 8th. Pretty cool stuff going on. So that's the latest. Thank you so much for watching.